Okay, now welcome to the last stop on this tour bus To the top where I was told her work would lure us Sure enough, look where I'm headed The opposite direction of the life that I dreaded Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim, this is Akashka and AC Sports Report. You see the title and you know I did this debate last year on and so, sometime in October. My opinion has changed and I've set up a system that I believe would be successful for the MLB. I will reveal that system in a second, but first listen to my thoughts that I had about this topic last year. Now, here's the points I'm going to make. I'm... I'm not in favor of adding a salary cap. Here, here's why. First of all, the teams that are the bad teams, the Pirates and the Royals, make it look like every single small market team hasn't and can't win. Yet, we see these teams like the Rays, the Twins, the Marlins, the Rockies, who have been... The Rockies were in the World Series, they've been back to the playoffs. The Rays were in the World Series, they've been back to the playoffs. The Marlins have won World Series, they choose not to pay money. That's their issue. The Twins were are consistently in those, no matter what, the Twins are in the playoffs. And they've locked up guys like Maurer and Morneau. So it, what it comes down to for me is if you are a good team, fans come to the stands, you make money off that, and you can afford to keep the players. But my next point is, you guys have to show up. If you're a Tampa Bay Rays fan, which I don't know a lot of, if you're a Tampa Bay Rays fan and you're complaining that you're going to lose Carl Crawford and all them, then you better have season tickets because if you're not going to pay to go to the, see the team, then you're helping in him leaving and going to the Yankees, Red Sox, Tigers, Angels, whatever team he ends up with. So... If you're going to complain, then you better be one of those people out there loudly cheering every night. Because why would you want to play in Tampa Bay or Florida? Why? The fans don't show up. The, the, the teams aren't very consistent. Alright, that being said, I think that entire video I made a lot of excuses. And it was somewhat of a homer video. Because I, I believe at this point that... Well, you can be successful as a small market, and I still believe the best way to build is through the farm system. Having the Yankees with it and the Phillies with the 200 and 170 million dollar payroll, and then having teams that actually want to spend money and just can't afford to do it. You know, you're in a situation where you it is not a level playing field. I don't think it's ever going to be a perfectly level playing field, and I don't think even putting in my system would make players be desiring to go to Kansas City, but I think that they're, here, let me just explain this to you, that, that's probably the simplest way to go about this. The system I've set up is a $90 million to $125 million payroll, which would start sometime, I mean obviously you're going to have to give notice to the teams, we're going to add a salary cap in, this is how it's going to go. You're going to give about a 90 to a $125 million payroll. So. If you look at the payrolls this season, there would be about seven teams that would fit into that. And then those seven teams would be the Rangers, the Dodgers, the Cardinals, Tigers, Twins, Giants, Mets, and the Cubs would be a little bit over by about uh, a few thousand dollars. So I think if you look at it that way, you, you kind of say, okay, these teams are in big contracts right now. And you're going to have to give them a few years to get out from underneath these contracts. So, basically, we can't start it right away. But you, you say, okay, in five years from the, this exact day, we're going to start a salary cap. You're going to have to clear out money to make sure you're under the cap. And, and a thing I don't want with the cap would be to have people be able to go over it and pay a luxury tax. I think at that point, what what is the point of the cap? But I think you're going to have to give something back to the players as well because this is going to make them make less money. So if they can make less money, if they make less money, you're going to have to give them something. And I think you give them their freedom a bit more to the point where you say, okay, after five seasons rather than the six it is now, or maybe even after four, you can become a free agent. I think that that's the best case scenario for them. And... I like how baseball is right now, and maybe it's just because my team's good. I, I don't know. But I understand that there are teams right now that it's just not a fair playing field. And 
I, I still think that there are ownerships that just, they, they refuse to spend the money. That is the Royals, the Pirates. Those teams draw good enough crowds that, to have better than 36 and 40 some million dollar payroll. I'm sorry. The Blue Jays do better than to have a 62. Um, the Braves can probably do a bit better than 87. And I think that um, one of the things you're going to have to put in is contracts that I don't even know if they're not like guaranteed, but maybe they're only guaranteed the first like three seasons of a seven-year deal. Take the Cubs, for example. They sign Alfonso Soriano an eight-year deal, which still probably has like four years left after this, three or four years. If you sign him to that contract and he underperforms, which he has massively, then after three years, either he takes a huge pay cut or you get out of the contract. I think that that is the best way you could possibly do this, is make non-guaranteed contracts and make the payrolls smaller and have two boundaries. Because everyone says, well, you got to set a limit. But I think what people don't understand is if you set a limit, there's, you're going to have the teams that can spend that limit. And then you're going to have the smaller teams that still spend what they spend now, and it's not really going to make any difference. I think if you ha make these teams get a certain amount of payroll, you'll get quite a few of the bad owners out of sports or make them start spending money. I mean, basically, you get two options. Either you spend the money or you're done. And I think the owner should be looked at more like that. If you don't start spending money, then you shouldn't be allowed to be an owner. I think that's the easiest way to put it. And I understand, I, I will post this as a video response to last year's um, video about this because my thoughts really have changed and I've sat back and thought, okay, you know, this really isn't fair. i got to stop kidding myself. So that would be my solution for the MLB 